We welcome you in on what's a pretty beautiful Tuesday here in the nation's capital. A great lineup on tap. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. Donald Trump says he doesn't care if his latest proposal isn't politically correct. The GOP frontrunner says he wants to bar all Muslim foreigners from entering the United States. And as correspondent Andrew Spencer reports, the presidential candidate is taking a lot of criticism for his view. We'll get to the package later. Let's get straight to our first guest. Joining us now is Zainab Chaudhry. She is Maryland Outreach Coordinator for CARE, the Council on, on American Islamic Relations. It's good to have you here. We'll hear from Donald Trump in just a moment. We'll find the tape and we'll get to it in the moments that follow. Thank you for having me. Uh, this was, uh, thank you for being here. We had uh, reached out to CARE prior to Donald Trump's remarks uh, in the hopes of having a conversation with you about where we are post San Bernardino. But let's begin with Donald Trump's comments. What's your reaction? What went through your heart when you heard of his proposal? It's extremely bizarre. Uh, we are absolutely horrified and appalled that any front runner of a presidential campaign, regardless of which party, would make fascist like remarks that basically marginalize an entire faith community and are in direct conflict with our constitutional values and the principles of liberty and freedom and justice and democracy that our nation was founded upon. It's just absolutely the lowest of the low. Donald Trump's candidacy and many of his remarks have been surprising. So to a certain extent, we're, uh, many people are beyond being surprised. Did this, did this come out of left field? You know, he has a history of making anti-Muslim bigoted remarks. He's been on record, he's gone on record to say that he would support special IDs for Muslim refugees and for Muslims. Uh, he supports the shutting down of mosques uh, across the nation. Um, he's made a lot of remarks that would, that would, that, that specifically marginalize the Muslim community. Um, so it's not entirely surprising that he would make these comments last night. But what is shocking to the American Muslim community is that he would be able to make these comments and feel that he can make them with relative impunity and not be held accountable. Um, as a public, as a public, um, as a public official who is running for the highest office in the land, he has a responsibility to not make reckless incendiary remarks that could c potentially jeopardize the safety of the American Muslim community or any faith community. And the fact of the matter is we, our communities, have been facing an unprecedented level of uh, bigotry and intolerance here in the United States in recent history. How is that manifesting? What sort of reports are you getting? So we're getting reports of hate crimes and bias attacks uh, of houses of worship that have been targeted uh, or that have been threatened. Um, there is a heightened level of anxiety and fears within the Muslim community across the nation. Um, a lot of Muslim women who wear the headscarf, they're now concerned for their safety and they're considering removing their headscarves. Uh, it's, it's really impacting our communities on a daily basis, like on a, on a very personal level. Um, and unfortunately, the kind of remarks that Mr. Trump and even Dr. Carson have made in the past and other public officials, they've helped to contribute to this uh, sense of anxiety that we're feeling. This would be, it seems, a perfect time for leaders of other faiths to reach out, mm -hmm. number one, and to stand alongside Secondly, the Muslim community to show that while we may be of different faiths, we're of one belief when it comes to core American values. We absolutely have to stand united. I think that was uh, President Obama's Oval Office address on Sunday night. That was one of the core components of his address, uh, that we must stand united as a nation and not turn against Muslims, um, especially in the aftermath of the horrific San Bernardino attack. And that's really a core message that we need to be able to reverberate throughout our society. because. D united we stand and divided we fall and there is a very real sense of fear and anxiety both within the Muslim community and outside of the Muslim community as well um, and if we aren't able to unite then we're not going to be able to defeat the challenges we're facing. Two interesting reactions uh, in the immediate aftermath of Donald Trump's remarks. One in the room, he was in South Carolina for a rally in a speech and the other later in the political sphere. I want to 
get your thoughts on both of those in just a moment. But first, to Andrew Spencer's report on Donald Trump's proposal and the reaction to it. Donald Trump has taken the idea of a religious test even further. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on? Hillary Clinton called the suggestion reprehensible, prejudiced, and divisive. The Council on American-Islamic Relations called Trump's idea outrageous, un-American, and reckless. This is exactly what ISIS wants from Americans, to turn against each other. Other Republican presidential candidates were also quick to distance themselves from Trump's proposal. Donald Trump always plays on everyone's worst instincts and fears. And saying we're not going to let a single Muslim into this country is a dangerous overreaction. Jeb Bush dismissed Trump on Twitter, calling him unhinged and saying his policy proposals aren't serious. Senator Lindsey Graham called on all presidential candidates to, quote, do the right thing and condemn Trump's proposal. But the line of supporters outside Trump's event in South Carolina shows he still has a lot of people on his side. He understands if he can keep the media focused on him and, and focused on playing his, his rallies live, that he'll be able to connect with other people. Any other candidate would kill for that. But he gets the media attention because of how outlandish he is sometimes. I'm Andrew Spencer reporting. Zainab Chaudhry, reporters in South Carolina at the Trump event report that there were cheers in the room when Mr. Trump made his proposal. Um, and uh, some analysts are predicting a short-term bump for him in the polls. Your thoughts on all of that? It's frightening. We, we know that his remarks are catering to towards a component of his base that would be energized by this kind of rhetoric, uh, but that any American would feel supportive of these kind of remarks that alienate an entire faith community, uh, basically saying that American Muslims who even have served as first responders, who are doctors, who are lawyers, uh, are all lumped into that category, who serve in the military, who have honorably served in the military, would now no longer be welcome to return into the United States to their home. Um, the fact of the matter is Muslims are a part of American society. We have been here for centuries. Our, our family lineages go back for many, many centuries. Um, and we, we contribute to society. We help to improve society. And to hear these kind of remarks and to hear people cheering is just very frightening. We'll go to the phones. Your questions and comments, your reaction to Donald Trump's proposal. Uh, if those of you watching in the 11 a.m. hour, between 11 and noon, we're live, able to take your calls, and always eager to do so. Grab an open line, please, at 703-387-1020. Not a ton of time, but enough to get a couple calls in, and I would really love to do it. It's an important topic. Uh, I would love to talk with you at 703-387-1020. We'll go to the phones as your questions and comments come in. A number of candidates, not named Trump, have said, uh, President Obama's remarks from the Oval Office Sunday night fell short because he didn't identify by name what they considered the foe, radical Islam. Can you speak to that? President Obama's remarks, overall, we applaud his message of unity and tolerance. Um, but in terms of his comments of holding, for example, the entire Muslim community accountable for uh, monitoring and policing our communities. It's unfair and it's, it's actually unreasonable because anytime a terrorist attack happens that Muslims are responsible for or they are part of, um, it automatically places the responsibility onto the shoulders of the American Muslim communities. It sets us up to be vilified. Um, I think the, the real foe that we're dealing with is not just ISIS but extremists and radicalized individuals in all faith communities. Um, the fact of the matter is ISIS was not developed in a vacuum. Um, there were factors that led to the formation of this terrorist organization, including four years of unrest in Syria, civil war in Syria that has resulted in over 200,000 lives lost. Of course, that's not a justification for the kind of horrific acts that ISIS is involved in. Um, but any reasonable, any, any viable solution to taking out ISIS would have to include the removal of Assad from power. Um, and an, the United States government has to work with the global community to get to that level. Many Muslim leaders have said that uh, the ideology uh, put forward by ISIS is completely at odds with what uh, 
Muslims believe fundamentally. George Bush, in the aftermath of the 2001 attacks in New York, said the same thing. Can you talk about that? Because I suspect uh, what most of us know about your faith, we could put in a thimble and have room left over. ISIS reflects, does not refl reflect the tenets of our faith. They do not reflect the religion of Islam. Their barbaric actions in no way, shape, or form are reflective of who, what Muslims truly believe. Um, this is a political ideology that we are tasked with marginalizing their platform and eradicating them from the face of this earth. Uh, and the fact is, Muslims are the majority of their victims, even abroad or whether here at home in the United States or abroad, um, the vast majority of their victims consist of Muslims. Even in the San Bernardino attack, we know that one of the victims was a Muslim woman who attended a mosque that one of the attackers was also um, known to attend. So. Uh, it's clear to, it's important to differentiate between the religion of Islam itself and this terrorist organization. And Muslims don't believe that they reflect, that this terrorist organization reflects who we are. We're up on the clock. I do want to go to the phone, though. So. Hello, TJ. We pick up on line one to speak with you. Go right ahead, please. Hi. Hi, caller. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. How are you this morning? Doing great, and we appreciate your watching. Go right ahead. Time is a little I'm, bit tight. I'm really vexed. I mean, uh, Donald Trump is talking out of both sides of his neck. It's unfortunate. You know, people are people. We are real. <laughs> I don't know what page he's on. I don't know where he came from, but he needs to go back. You know, he needs to understand that, you know, and get love in his heart for people. That's what it's about, the love. People are hurting today. And he's doing nothing but adding on, adding on to the hurt, to the pain, you know. It's, it's just ridiculous. I'm almost in tears. It's, it's, it's just a sad face right now. You know, I watch you guys on TV. I'm looking at this woman, and, you know, he's talking down on her, her world, her culture, her life. You know, all he knows is, you know, what he was brought up on, luxury, gold, money. It's not about that. It's about that. TJ, I, I stump it only because we're up, we're, we're past on time, and, but I did want to give you uh, some room. I hear the emotion in your voice. Thank you for watching. Thank you for calling Thank in you. and sharing your views as we wrap up. Are you confident that after this dust up that, uh, and the reaction, Dick Cheney, I mean, uh, these views are untenable to uh, Dick Cheney, uh, an obvious leader in uh, the party whose nomination Mr. Par Mr. Trump seeks. Are you confident this idea ends up in the, in the trash bin? We sincerely hope so. We truly appreciate the words, words of support and condemnation from GOP leaders and elected officials across the board. We know that a Floridian mayor has also spoken out and banned Mr. Trump from entering his city. Um, and so it's really reassuring to see the American public also speaking up and condemning this kind of rhetoric. We sincerely hope so. Zainab Chaudhry is Maryland Outreach Manager for the Council on, Is on American Islamic uh, Relations. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for your time. We'll talk with you again, I hope. Thank you for having me. Appreciate your being here. We are back with much more after this.